This is my daughter, Feather. Because of my influence and guidance, she was inspired to become a lawyer. This is my father, Harry. I hired him as an investigator for my law firm to keep him out of trouble. father out of trouble. At least as a lawyer, I can keep him out of jail. How grand. Hey, call out the fire department. When I first took this assignment... You didn't want to do it? No. <laughs> I didn't want to interview a dull, stuffy old shipping magnet. When I granted your magazine this interview, I expected a tweedy, drab guy with typewriter print all over his hand. Or anything but that. Thank you. You want to know how I started? Mm-hmm. I refitted an old rust bucket, a hulk. Suddenly I was a ship owner. People call me Joe. A few ships later, they called me Joseph. Today, I own a fleet of tankers all over the world. It's Mr. Generalis. <laughs> Mr. Generalis. Alec, right, what's the matter with you? Look at you, this is a fancy joint. You want to ruin my image? I'm very sorry. It's about that matter. Oh, excuse me. I think this is a cue to pout in my nose. Charlie? No, that's what I want to talk to you about. Just take care of him, Alex. Mr. Generalis, I really wish you would reconsider Charlie. He's just a harmless old man. We, we've been through that before. Pay him off. What would it take? Ten, twenty thousand, nothing. You expect me to be able to sail out of here with Charlie hanging over my head? I wake up with him in my dreams every night. I... Now you do what I say. Tonight, get it over with. Tonight. Three pretty maids all in a row. Supposed to be here. Oh, come on. I stayed away till my eyelids surrendered. Oh, Enzo looks like he's having a terrific time. Yeah, he's dreaming about a nudist camp for munchkins. <laughs> <laughs> How was your stag party, Uncle Charlie? Oh, marvelous. Marvelous. Well, what jumped out of the cake was Enzo with the deck of cards. I expected something more traditional. Traditional? What's traditional? You've been living now with Annie for 30 years. Now you decide to make it legal. I'm impetuous. <laughs> yeah. Well, scale wages for long hours, Harry. How about a cut of the cards for a hundred? Why not? Uh oh, another pretty lady, Charlie. You're gonna have to dig deep to beat her. Just before your wedding, you're entitled to a little luck. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, people. Without getting sloppy at tonight, I'll always remember. Hey, Charlie, don't let her horse collar you. Now you stay loose. Oh, and don't forget your present. <laughs> oh, yeah, Annie'd kill me if I'd opened these here. You sure would. Thank you. Everybody say good night to Charlie. Good, good night, night, Charlie. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night Charlie. What happened? What did I miss? Thursday and Friday. <laughs> Harry! What? Hey, what's the matter with your eyes? Didn't you see him palm that ace? There's nothing wrong with my eyes, honey. Look, it's just a little sister we worked at. Good night, everybody. Lou, take care. Bye, Lou. When Charlie's really down, he asks to cut the cards and I loan him a few bucks. 
Come on, you know Charlie. The man has got too much pride to just put the arm on you. You're terrific, you know that? I'm terrific and I'm out a hundred bucks. He just shot Charlie. It was that job that killed him. Things were bad. Oh, sure, he'd come home and shower up and put a fresh boot in there. I'll go see you and the boys, Harry. But by days, he did dishes. What do you mean the job killed him? There's nothing I could prove. His work was part-time on board that yacht of the uh, shipping tycoon. Uh, you mean Generalis? I... Well, one afternoon he came home and he was real upset. He quit and he, he wouldn't say why. It was, it was like he was afraid to talk about it. There were funny things going on in that yacht. And it cost my Charlie his life. <laughs> How can you say we're not after Generalis? Look at this. It's comforting to know our law enforcement officials are on the job. When his tanker went down, accidentally, the federal boys jumped right on it. And so did you. Well, sure I did. I can see those headlines. Local assistant DA indicts shipping magnet. But I had to give it up. Now look, there's three months of investigation and nothing to use against Generalis. Nothing. You have me now. Well, at least one of my wishes came true. Hadley, I'll do anything I can to help you get Generalis. Anything. Charlie Hux was very special to me. See, when Harry was away, Charlie always made sure I was fed and diapered. We can work together. What are you asking me for? Authorization. The green light to open up a few doors. A little official clearance. Oh, that's all Harry needs, official clearance. He could run amok. No, 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 this is between you and me. Harry won't know anything about it. I don't know. Hadley, remember the headline. Assistant DA indicts shipping magnet. You sure know how to get a guy with an overblown ego. Then we've got the green light? Green light. Where are you going? To tell the district attorney what a crazy deal I just made. Hi. I put this together in a hurry, but it'll give you a pretty good idea of what Generalis is worth. America's answer to the Greeks. He's tickling the billionaire class. That's only one side of the ledger. Look at this. What's this? A lot of red ink here. The shipping business is in a slump, Harry, and Generalis is going right down with it, to the tune of $1 million a month. Do you remember the Philenia disaster, that big tanker that went down at sea? Yeah, about two months ago. Took 11 hands down with it. Right. Well, that was Generalis' flagship. He collected the insurance. Yeah, it's all very interesting, honey, but there's not enough here to hang our hats on. Oh, come on. We've started with a lot less than this before. Now, wait a minute. That tone in your voice. Now, that's the one you're always accusing me of having. The police don't know where to start, Harry. Go on. Go on. Shock me. I want to mark him. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Say that again. I want to mark Generalis. 
Charlie. Look, how are you going to mark a man like Generalis? Who's he afraid of? Who's bigger than he is? The government. I doubt it. Who knows who he's got in his pocket? Syndicate? Possible. Possible. All right, then you play it really big. Like, like the Godfather. Yeah. You come to me with your problem. No. You come to me with your problem. Hey, that's good. Yeah, yeah. But I need somebody else, somebody to add to the image, build it up a little. I ain't so bad. Or I could be somebody else's girlfriend, some real biggie. Somebody who's not around to say different. Right. Okay. Who's not around? Uh, Big Jim Morgan, he's not around. He's stuck in the New York DA. That's a biggie. Okay, okay. What else? I'm gonna need a bodyguard. Right. Um, what about that big guy, that, that guy that hangs out at the barber shop? Well, Ike? Oh, honey, you kidding? Well, he looks scary enough, but gee, every time he opens his mouth, he sounds like he sings soprano for the Vienna Boys Choir. All right, so he doesn't talk. It's even scarier. Feather. I think it's gonna work. N no, not Feather, Rita. I always wanted to be a Rita. Yeah. Now, there could be a snag that way. See, this way, we avoid the taxes on all the outside revenue. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Mr. Generalis, can't you see I'm busy? I hate to interrupt you, but I've just gotten some very disturbing news about poor old Charlie. Like what? Well, it seems that uh, he was um, connected. Of course, Mr. Marcus, all well, our uh, drivers are licensed and bonded. Yeah, that's good. How many does he got? There are 11 available. Naturally, you can choose. 11? That's all you got? Well, uh, yes, of, of this type. Yeah. Well, we'll have to do. Now, Marcus, if I may remind you, you will need a car immediately for your personal use. That's right. You got a Rolls, of course. Uh, yes, of course. All right, send the bills to my friend, Mr. Joseph Generalis. To, to? Generalis. I tell him how to spell $2,600 for limousines. Oh, and I love this one. $7,000 for a monument in loving memory of Charlie. What is this? This is a very delicate matter, Mr. Parsons. Our office did not authorize... What's that? Ordered by who? Mr. Marcus. Let me get back to you. I don't know what's going on. That, uh, Mr. Marcus, that must be the Don Marcus I've been hearing about. Special favor to Big Jim, he's flying out from Arizona or someplace to make sure that Big Jim's girl has all the help she needs. Who is this Don Marcus? And Big Jim, what has he got to do with this? I don't know, I never heard of him. You don't know? I pay you to know these things. There's no way to know about everybody. The little Charlie nobody, the pot scrubber, connected to power, and suddenly I'm getting invitations to church services. Mr. Generalis, if we hang tight, these people are just guessing. They've got no proof. Since when do these people need any proof? Look, we have only two options. On the one hand, if we did make a colossal mistake, then maybe we'd better repair the damage as quickly as possible. You show up at that funeral, it's a side confession. You must treat these people with respect. You don't treat them lightly. On the other hand, maybe the best move is no move at all. Maybe we'll just let those bills sit for a while. Let them linger, see what happens. Oh, I don't know. Let me have a drink. All these people were Charlie's friends. Get Annie settled in the limousine. Any sign of Generalis? 
had not. I hate to say this, Harry, but all Generalis has to do is ignore us and we'll be stock cold. And we'll be paying for his funeral for the rest of our lives. Yeah. You know something? It was worth it. everything to your satisfaction. It's fine, Michael. Just check around, see that everybody's got enough. I don't want anybody to want for nothing at Charlie's wake. I'll try to follow your instructions exactly as you give them, and I hope that everything will just work out perfectly to your orders. Very good, gentlemen. Is there anything further I can bring you, gentlemen? No, just fine. Uh, excuse me. Uh, that gentleman over there, Marcus, uh, who is he? Who? Don? Don Marcus? <laughs> Everybody knows. Uh, look, I don't know from anything. I just work here. I just want to know who he is. Anything you ask me, I don't know. Excuse me. It's time for me to deal. Time to weigh anchor and head out of here, if you want my opinion. Then what happened? My ships can't dock in a lot of ports. Delays in unloading. I've got to do business with these people. Where are your manners? He comes to pay his respects to Charlie. They're a little overprotective of me. It's the times we live in, you know. People getting killed on the streets. I don't think we've met. I am Joseph Generalis. Sit down and have something to eat. Clear a place for the time. Okay. Well, they have a little wine. I chose this especially for the occasion. Sit down. Very glad that you came here to honor Charlie's past. You know, today these things seem not to matter so much, but you're from the old school, like me. You'll know the proper thing to do. Of course, I wanted to be here. There have been some bills that have been sent to me. Flowers, cemetery plots. I think they total about $17,000. Yeah, all the arrangements. I handle them personally. Why'd you send them to me? It was a small thing, a gesture. You were no doubt Charlie's good friend. Charlie had a lot of friends. Oh, I certainly want to do all I can. Perhaps you and I want to talk about something at a more quiet place, huh? It's always good to talk. Stay on my yacht. Agree. Rita. Don. Please, stay there. Your papa's at peace now. No more crying. Jimmy Cole. I told him all you've done. Say no more about it. Is he the one that did it? Now, Rita, be calm. Though. It is, isn't it? We're going to talk, Rita. It's him. You! You, you have the nerve to come here and show your face here? I'm going to handle it. Don't make a scene, will you? Don't make a scene. A terrible mistake was made here. A sad one, certainly. But a mistake. I know you meant no harm to us. I know it. My people know it. I mean, we're men of the world, after all. But you see, Mr. Generalis, there's a woman involved. 
You know, the woman, the emotion takes over. Oh, it's terrible that such a thing should happen to little Charlie here. Uh, what's his name? Hux. Hux. It's a very delicate situation. Oh, uh, you know, I put something together to, to make things right. Uh, $10,000 for the widow to smooth things over for her. Rita, a little something here from Mr. Generalis. What is this? Blood money. No, that's for your mother. Rita, she ain't got nothing. This could help her. I don't take blood money. I'll show you what I think of your stinking wait, money. Wait, wait, come on, be reasonable, will you? I spit on your money. I will have satisfaction. If you won't do it, my Jimmy will. Maybe. Hey, hey. I'll be calm. Be calm. Hey, Rita, this is a man of honor. Honor? I'll give him honor. He pays respects to your father. He pays all the bills. He offers this little token. Money. Money's not enough. Take me home. Oh, wait a moment. Look, this is a difficult time. And perhaps we'll all be in better spirits the next time we meet. But unfortunately... I have to be underway. You're not moving till I'm done with you. Terrific acting job you did back there. Who was acting? I don't like that man. You got a lot of your mother in here. She got angry. It was like going three rounds with a female Rocky Marciano. I bet you spent a lot of time on the canvas. Uh, I learned how to roll with the punches. Generalis had a glass jaw. Captain Doherty, sir, public health service. And this is Dr. Margola, my chief of staff. Mr. Generalis, one Charles Hux, recently deceased, was a former employee. What of it? We're about to make it to San Diego. There is evidence of infectious hepatitis found of one Charles Hux, former hand on the sojourner. Subject to further investigation, said sojourner is quarantined and confined to this berth until released by the medical examiner's office. Let me see that, please. We're outside the office of Neville Allen, special counsel for the New York District Attorney's Office. Mr. Allen is now in a meeting with Big Jim Morgan. Now, we understand bond has been posted, Big Jim promising to appear sometime later this month. What's wrong? This whole con is built around being able to use Big Jim's name. He's supposed to be in hiding. Well, he's not in hiding anymore, Harry. And here he comes right, now. Mr. Mr. Morgan, Mr. Morgan, now we understand you went away to avoid warrants against you. I was visiting relatives of those charges I just heard about. The gang style killing on the West Coast, Charlie Hux, it's been rumored that he was a close friend of yours. I never heard of him. Your name has been linked with Don Marcus, sir. What about that? Don? What's this Don stuff? The only Don I ever heard about was Don Amici. <laughs> yes. All right, Miss Morgan. That's it. One other question. Thank you, Morgan. Good morning. I'll take you something. Yeah. Oh, this is Joe Generalis here. Hey, just a minute. Uh, Mr. Generalis. Uh, well, how nice to hear from you. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure you'd be around when uh, Mr. Morgan flies out. I thought it'd be mutually beneficial if we all got together. Well, this is wonderful news. Hey, how did you talk Jimmy into flying out west? Oh, we've had some dealings through the years. Mr. Morgan supplies us with certain considerations along the docks. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I thought if we all got together, the men, then maybe we could work out uh, Charlie's daughter's little problem. I tell you what, I'll pick him up personally at the airport. 
No, no, that won't be necessary. Uh, he arrives at 10.45. I'm sending a car. He should be on my yacht by uh, 12 o'clock. Well, Rita will be so happy, Mr. Generalis. Uh, we'll see you then. Who's coming to dinner? I think that should be it. <sighs> How much of a musical interest do you want to give me? Oh, a few seconds. That ought to be enough. We interrupt once again for a follow-up on our earlier bulletin. The police assault on the yacht of American shipping magnate Joseph Generalis is still underway. Reports from the scene say the exchange of gunfire began when the police attempted to board the vessel for inspection. The police are putting anyone connected with Generalis under heavy scrutiny. with me. Hey, man, what's the beat? You're being detained, and this car is being held on a 409-6 for inspection. You're going to the security hangar. Where's that? The other side of the airport. The other end of the airport? Man, that's over four miles. You don't expect me to stay in your handcuffed to the wheel of this car for that distance, do you? Hey, come on, what are you guys trying to pull? Come on, get me out of here. Oh, hey, Joe, you want to get out of here? Come on, get me out of here. trouble coming. Throw open the hood. I'd sure hate to be on that yacht with Big Jim coming up the gangway. If anything happens, we go to Plan S. Plan S? What's that? We swim. <laughs> Welcome aboard. It'll be nice seeing Jimmy again. I will you turn that thing off? It's giving me a headache. Maybe a little music make the trip go faster. Hey, you want to hear that music from a hospital bed? <laughs> it's 12 o'clock. The traffic's heavy. They'll be here any minute. I don't think he even talked to Jimmy. Oh, he'll be here. Women. I can close a million-dollar deal over the phone in two minutes, but with her, Are it's you like... you sure that Jimmy said he was coming today? You recognize this place? Ask this guy if he knows where he's going, will you? Hey, we're going around in circles. Gee, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm kind of new on a job. Uh, may maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get a traffic report. Will you turn the thing off? <laughs> this guy don't know where he's going. Ask him where he is going. Hey, huh? Sport, where you going? I was thinking maybe if I take the Slauson cutoff from the San Bernardino Freeway, and, and then it's, uh, then it would, yeah? There's a sign over there. It says Marina. The Marina is over there. Oh, you're right. Yeah, so it is. Hey, gee. Stop the car. Hey, you heard the man. Stop the car. My heart. 
Look, my heart. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I don't even believe that. Do you believe that? Uh-huh. Give me the hospital. Follow up. I can get a cab around here somewhere. He's a driver, isn't he? Let him drive himself to the hospital. Get me a cab. From the scene, say the exchange of gunfire began when the police attempted to board the vessel for inspection. The police are putting anyone connected with Generalis under heavy scrutiny. You understand immediately. I know you didn't kill my father. Personally kill him. You have someone else do that. You talk to people. You point the finger. Yeah. So you point the finger again. By your hand, he died, and by your hand, he's avenged. I'm sick and tired of this mealy mouth. I'm calling New York. Now, Rita, you owe it to the man to listen. He owes me. But can't we find Rita. some reasonable ground? I tried to help you, but you are not sincere. Look, we'll talk, we'll talk again, right? Telling you I never heard of them. These people don't exist. You're being taken for a ride. Oh. Yes, sir. And we'll be filing that brief with uh, Judge Franklin. Hang on. With Judge Franklin in Superior Court tomorrow. I can't. No, no not you, sir. There's somebody in my. Put him on hold. Uh. Uh. It's. Can you hold on a second? It's my other phone. What is this? I'm talking to him. I want you to hold next week open. Well, the whole week? Well, I think I could arrange... This is business, Hadley. The Generalis case, remember? What about that? You were supposed to let me know what... I'm sorry, sir. About the brief. Oh. Yeah. Well, don't go. I know you're there, sir. And I'm here. Feather? Uh, well, a feather is a... Um, it's kind of hard to explain. Can, can I call you back? Thank you. Hey, isn't anyone going after that phone? As long as Generalis is calling on the phone, he's not knocking on our door. Who is it? It's me, Margot. Who did you think it was? Big Jim is staying at the plaza. Presidential suite. You're sure at the plaza? I'm sure. He's there right now. Okay, Lou, Margot, go. Ah, uh, yeah, Mr. Generalis. I hope you've reconsidered your position. Look, I don't know what your game is, but you've got a lot of money of mine. And after I get it back, I'm taking a little interest. Do you know who you're talking to? Nobody. I'm talking to nobody. Big Jim says you don't exist. I don't exist? 
Well, what do you know about that? I suppose he denies Rita, too. Okay. Then it's true. True? What's true? You made the deal with Detroit. Detroit? Now we're gonna see who don't exist. <laughs> I want to see Mr. Morgan. But does Mr. Morgan want to see you? Ah, well, let him be the judge of that. Yeah, come in. Now, wait a moment. You have no right. I'm from the State Crime Commission. I don't care if you're the Queen of England. You got no appointment. I have a lawful subpoena here for Mr. Morgan to answer as to his knowledge of underworld payoffs in interstate trucking. There ain't nobody home. Big Jim ain't here. I could be back here within the hour with the police. Yeah, but... Now you want to walk down the stairs, or you want to fly down the stairs? Very well. You leave me no alternative. You know what? There was a guy. Here. I heard. I heard. I heard. Underworld payoffs, huh? interstate trucking. Never mind that I could go to jail. Our own people will lean on me if they even think I might testify. I got to drop out of circulation for a while. Get on the phone. Call New York. Wake my lawyers up. Call you from the airport. Uh, can you repeat that? I said, Big Jim ain't going to be around no more. No, he got in trouble with the wrong people. He's been permanently retired. Hello? Hello? I think you got a new lead story. Big Jim Morgan's just disappeared. And if I read Miss Anonymous right, they won't find the bones to bury him. Can we use it? It's unconfirmed. Well, we'll make a few calls. We'll check our reliable sources. And then if no one finds him... He's disappeared. Big Jim says Marcus doesn't exist. Marcus says Big Jim doesn't exist. Well, arrange another meeting. Let him fight it out. You deal with the winner. Except that I just spit Marcus's eye. Team was on the scene within 20 minutes. And I've been trying to reach Big Jim on the phone six times in the past. Now and all I get is he isn't in. And now for today's feature story, a KXIU exclusive. Big Jim Morgan, reputed underworld boss, is missing. Informed sources have it that Big Jim ran afoul of another as yet unnamed kingpin of the underworld and paid the price. Police offer no comment at this point, but are investigating. What the hell is that all about? You mean no subpoena? Nobody wants you. The State Crime Commission isn't even in session. I've been had just like Generalis. I talked to Generalis. He's gone down to the Olympia Hotel to see this uh, Don Marcus character. I think it's time I paid a personal visit to this Don Marcus. <laughs> Generalis is here, but someone. Send them in alone. This afternoon at 
seems I was a little hasty. I would like your help in dealing with that woman, Big Jim's girl. Big Jim don't have a girl anymore. See, Reed and I found we got a lot in common. Miss Hutch? I want to know who pulled the trigger. I want to know who killed Charlie. Who? My man, Alex. Get in here. You! Stand over there. I will have satisfaction when the man who killed my father is killed by your hand. Mr. Generalis. made me do it. You give orders. Your people do as they're told. That's all I did. I even liked Charlie. But he needed Charlie out of the way. Him, not me, him. Why? Why was my father killed? There's no point in dragging this out. I'm also curious about that, Mr. Generalis. We never spoke of it. I mean, why would a man of your stature want to kill Charlie Huck? He was nothing. He was insignificant. Maybe little Charlie was insignificant. But $25 million wasn't. That's what the insurance company was willing to settle for when Flenia went down. Well, they were suspicious, all right. The ship was in a thousand feet of water, so they couldn't prove a thing. Except little Charlie overheard Generalis talking about it. And I even told him he, he should try to buy Charlie off, but he said no. Eleven men went down with the Falenia. That's murder. Maybe I couldn't buy Charlie. Look, I made a deal. I'm sticking to my end. That'll no longer be necessary, Mr. Generalis. Excuse me, say cheese. Cheese. What is this? Okay, Generalis, you're under arrest. Take him. They can't hang me any higher. I played the scene for real, Mr. Generalis, but not that real. Sorry. Wrong floor. Going down. All that time and you never said a word. Well, I didn't want to craft your star. But I would have if you'd gotten creative. You son of a gun. But you know, I'm kind of proud of you for it. Yeah? You played that scam to perfection. And you played it straight with Hadley, too. Best of both worlds. Well, thank you very much. What's going to happen to Annie, Paul? What's she going to do now? Well, I don't know. She's got a sister in Nebraska. Guess she'll go out there and milk the chickens or whatever it is they do. I can hardly wait a fly time. Nothing good's happened to me since I left New York. I... I... 
uh, I don't think so, no. I remember you from somewhere. Your accent says New York. I used to be a chef at the Via Beto restaurant. Now I remember. Great scrappy.